Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Andre, your bookworm, and today we have a bit of a nasally voice because I've been sick recently, but I'm still here to give you another wrap-up slash predictive uh, reads for the month of July, August, and hopefully also with the news that soon I should be able to include some more long content videos, more reviews, hopefully, and even some other videos of just talking about some topics that I really want to explore, some of them suggested by you subscribers, others by friends, so I'm keen to explore that. But let's talk about what this video is today. But before that, don't forget, subscribe, like the content if you're new, and let's go for it. So these videos are pretty much a very short review of what I read in the month that just passed, in this case in July, and I'll also try to predict what I'm gonna read in August, although so far that has been fulfilled, other times not so much, but we'll get there. This was a very good month for me, month of July, and I mean, it's not astounding like some readers that read 20 books in a month, for me it was good because I read 5 books and 3 manga volumes, which gave me around 3,500 pages. I mean, it's a big improvement from last month, which was probably a thousand pages less, but it also meant that the scores I gave were more mixed. It, they ranged from 3.4 to 5, which, I mean, is still all in the positive, but when we have scores going below 3.5, we know that they are starting to get a little bit iffy, but luckily we didn't have any 2.5 or worse than that, because that would definitely be a terrible sign. But you know how this will go, I'll start with the books that I'm currently reading, then the books I've read, and then the books I will read starting then with the books I am currently reading. As you know, I'm always reading some Wheel of Time book because I've been on this buddy read for a couple of years now and I am currently reading Crossroads of Twilight. This is the 10th book of the Wheel of Time series written by Robert Jordan. At the moment, I'm three quarters through this book, which means that I hope I'll be able to finish it in the month of August and that means I will be reading the 11th book, but that goes in the sections soon after. But yeah, so I'm currently reading, I think this is probably the most sluggish of the slog across the whole series, and it's been very, very tough. If I thought that The Winter's Heart was a bit of a slog, this one definitely killed it. And that's because, like, in half of the book, nothing happens. It's just nothing, really. But of course, we gotta keep reading, because I know soon we'll be having epic moment after epic moment, and it'll just be amazing with great books one after the other. My other current read at the moment is The Dragon of Jin Saiyang, which has this cover, and it's written by K.S. Viloso. And yes, I know, this also means that finally I finished the book Of Darkness and Light by Ryan Cahill, which I had been reading for a couple of months, but I can finally say I finished it, and that will be one of the things I'm gonna talk about in the books I finished this month. As for The Dragon of Jin Saiyang, I don't have much to say as of yet, because I'm only roughly 10% of this book. I really hope that it has a better score than the previous one in this series, because it wasn't good, so let's see how the trilogy ends. My third ongoing read is Skyward by Brendan Sanderson. I, this is a sci-fi book, not Cosmere, this is one of his non-Cosmere series, it's a young adult book as well, and if you saw my last wrap-up slash predicting video, you saw that this was the last book that I was predicting to read, so that means that I read all the other ones, and I'm currently on this one, and I'm already halfway, so it's a good sign. I'm liking it, I'm really enjoying it, it's fun, it's refreshing, it's science fiction, which is also something different from Brandon Sanderson, so it's a good read. And then another book that I started today and will probably finish today because it's very short is the 40th volume of One Piece by Eiichiro Oda. This is the continuation of the Water 7 arc and it's getting to its full epicness, battles left, right and center, there's a lot happening, they're no longer specifically in Water 7, I don't want to give a lot of spoilers, but I mean, this has happened a long time ago, it's probably okay for spoilers, but I still won't say anything for the hardcore fans that don't want to know anything, but let me just say that this is a very good volume so far, 
and the previous ones that I read in the month of July, also amazing, but I'll talk about them soon. Okay, now that my ongoing reads are out of the way, what did I finish exactly in the month of July? Well, starting with Wheel of Time, of course, I finished Winter's Heart, which is the ninth book of the Wheel of Time series, written by Robert Jordan. I have a review for this book, I will be posting it very soon, I just need to record it and edit it, but I'm very keen to talk about this, even though it wasn't that great of a book. This book had a very strong slog portion, however the ending, I must say, was very epic and I was very keen to read it for the second time. It allowed me to understand a lot better what was happening all around and, of course, the endings are always epic with Robert Jordan and The Wheel of Time, so it's always fun to read these, but to get there, it did take a bit of effort. And, I mean, this is seen on Goodreads, because this book only has a score of 3.97 out of 5, so below 4. However, for me, I think it's still able to be a bit better, and it got a 4.2 out of 5. The next book I finished was Of Darkness and Light by Ryan Cahill, and I know it took ages to finish this book, but that doesn't mean it's a bad or a boring book. Completely the opposite. I thought this book was engaging, there was a lot happening, and I think there was a huge improvement from the first book. Not only in terms of writing, but the world itself, the characters, they developed their own personality. And that's what I wanted from Ryan Cahill, is to see that he had the potential to create a world that felt either unique and felt like it was its own thing. And I think he achieved that. And I can totally see how this world can become one of those epic fantasy series that are recommended all around the world that have the Cahill flair to it. On Goodreads, this book has a score of 4.46 out of 5, which is very high. I did not expect to, to have this high of a score, and for me, I gave it a 4.2 out of 5. But I can totally see why people would love this book, and I think I maybe be a bit more critic about some of the points that I will discuss in a video soon, but it's still a very good score, and I still it was still an improvement from the first book. After that, I read Malice by John Gwynn. This is a first in a series, a new series that I'm starting here on the channel, and the series is called The Faithful and the Fallen. The Bound and the Broken, The Faithful and the Fallen. These series all have these like dual names that get me confused. This one is The Faithful and the Fallen, and it's a series composed of four books. This is also an epic fantasy series, although not in the medieval western sense, I mean, still western, but this one has a more Nordic inspiration to it, which was refreshing. It was, there was a lot of concepts that were new that I found interesting. There were also some parts that I didn't enjoy as much, and you've probably seen on my shorts with regarding to characters or number of characters that show up at the start. They got me a bit confused. Again, I shall talk more about this in a video soon, there's so many videos to produce and to talk about that I really need to get onto. But I think still it was a good read and I'm very keen to read the rest. On Goodreads, this book has a score of 4.17 out of 5 and my score was a, guess, 4.2 out of 5. It seemed like the start of the month was very repetitive with the same scores, but I think that is just good standards for good books. It's a 4.2. And I mean, it's pretty close to the Goodreads average, so I guess the majority of the population thinks the same. Once I finished my list, I moved on to science fiction, and I read The Faded Sky by Mary Robinette Cowell. This is the second book of a trilogy called the Lady Astronaut Trilogy. I have read the first book, I haven't reviewed here on the channel, probably won't because I read it so long ago, I don't remember in detail the things to talk about, and therefore I probably won't post a review of this one as well, but what I have to say is, it was okay. It's a science fiction that is focused mostly on character and not really on concepts, on plot or world building. Those are still okay, but they weren't amazing, let's say. Nonetheless, it's still an interesting parallel world situation to explore. On Goodreads, this book has a score of 4.27 out of 5, which is quite high, but for me, this was actually the book with the lowest score and it got a 3.4 out of 5. And that's because I just didn't think the characters were engaging or the plot was engaging. They were just okay for me, but then again, 
That's because I'm a more plot-driven person or world-building person. If you're a character-driven person, this might be an excellent book for you. So just take that into account when thinking about reading this trilogy. And the last book I read was Turning Darkness into Light by Marie Brennan. This is the sixth and final book of the series called The Memoirs of Lady Trent, or most famously known by the first book, which is called A Natural History of Dragons. It has an amazing cover, and this one was also cute. It was an epistolary novel. It gave rise to one of the shorts that I published because I found interesting the format. I liked the format, but I didn't really think the story was amazing in itself. It was okay, it was fun to read, but it was no longer related with dragons, so I don't know if it should belong to the series. I mean, this is like a spin-off. It doesn't belong to the main five books, but still, it felt a bit off. More like this should be a spin-off, but not included in the series, let's say. On Goodreads, this book has a score of 4.19 out of 5, and my score was 3.8 out of 5. So, a bit different, like I said, a bit lower, maybe because my expectations were in the wrong place when I started reading this book, but then again, I think the writing style was amazing. I would give probably a 4 or 5 for writing style, and for the other categories, maybe a bit less. This is another book I probably won't have a review on the channel, because I would have to review the first five of them, and I've read them so long ago that I don't remember in detail what I gave to each category, but just have that into account. What I can say is, the previous books were a lot better. I really enjoyed the series, starting with The Natural History of Dragons, and I think this one would probably be one of the lowest in the whole series. Those were all the books I read. I also read three manga volumes, all one piece, of course, read volumes from 37 to 39, all still within Water 7 arc. They were amazing, very epic moments that were leaving you with your jaw dropped, that were making you root for the characters and sometimes for the ones that you didn't expect to root for, but yeah, they were really good volumes. I'll have the Goodreads scores for the three of them here and the scores I gave on this side and I will, they were respectively 5, 4.6 and 4.6. So as you can see, in manga volumes, the writing or the reading was very good quality, which is great. And those were the books slash mangas that I read in July. Now let's go to the predictive part of this video, which is what books will I read in August? Well, if I finish Crossroads of Twilight, then the book I shall be reading will be also Wheel of Time, but I'll be reading the prequel, which is called New Spring. This is, according to the publishing order, this was when this book was published, between books 10 and 11, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to take a break from the slog and also read something more engaging and that I'm really keen to read because it's short as well, very short compared to the other books, so should be a fast read. If I finish The Dragon of Jin Saiyang, then my next e-reader read will probably be The Velvet Rage. It won't be a fiction book, this is a non-fiction book. It was highly recommended from a lot of my friends, and so I decided to give it a try and see what it is about. Still in sure if I'll publish a review here or not, especially because it's non-fiction, so it's a bit weird to publish reviews about non-fiction. I won't be able to have the categories as usual, so still have to think about it, but either way, it'll be a good read, hopefully. Once I finish Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, I'm gonna venture into Familia series, and I'm hoping to continue the Faithful and the Fallen series with Vala, which is the second book written by John Gwynn. I'm very curious to see how this story will develop, especially because there were so many things left open that I want to know about, so I'm keen to read this, and that will also mark half of the series, so hopefully there will be more important things left open or discovered, mysteries unsolved, all of those things to get me to read even more or at least finish the series and, I don't know, be astounded, hopefully. After that, my plan is to read The Rise of Endymion by Dan Simmons. This is the fourth and final book of the Hyperion Cantos and this has been such a wild ride. I really enjoyed all the books in the series. Some of them have a 5 score, some of them are just below 5, so it's been amazing books one after the other after the other. And this comes with 
a bittersweet feeling because I do want to read this. I'm very keen to read it. But at the same time, I don't want to because then the experience will end and I don't know what will happen after. So there's that bitter feeling to feel, bitter feeling, that bittersweet feeling to feel. Either way, amazing journey. Can't wait to read it. And after that, I'm still unsure where I'll jump into. I'm deciding if I shall jump to this world and read another witch's book, which is called Sorcery by Terry Pratchett, or if I should jump into the Shadows of the Apt series and continue with some Adrian Tchaikovsky and read The Blood of the Mantis. This is the third book in the Shadows of the Apt series. It's very short as well, so might be able to read both, who knows? But yeah, like that's my predictive reading. And of course, amongst all these reads, I shall also be picking more One Piece volumes, continue reading Water 7 arc, maybe finish. I keep saying that I'll finish Water 7 arc by three months already, but at least I'll advance some more, and I'm always keen to finish and continue reading the new arcs, because it's always so good to relive the arcs that I've already seen on the anime, but also getting close to the current arc, which is just amazing. But those are all the books that I had to talk about today. Let me know what is the book that you're most keen to hear about? What is your August reading like? Are you going to read more books? What are some recommendations that uh, you read in July that I should read? Let me know, comment down below. And if you're new, don't forget, subscribe, like the content, and I'll be seeing you soon, right? On Thursdays and Sundays. Okay? There.